what's going on everybody hey i was listening i got some feedback from uh here in my last episode there was some sound quality issues and i think there was a you know maybe a inse- unsecured connection to my microphone so forgive me for that hopefully uh you can still get some value out of that episode hopefully uh we got it fixed too so we'll see on this one before i put it up but today on today's show talking about something super important it's uh something I'm hearing a lot about, a lot of conversations about, and that is hypocrisy. And specifically as it relates to Christianity and Islam, you might be familiar with uh, Mr. Andrew Tate, a popular name out there these days. And I've been seeing a lot of content just about how he's reached a perspective recently that Islam is superior to Christianity because it actually does what it says, which I think is kind of interesting. And so I want to deep dive into this because he's basically falling back on a logical fallacy that many encounter when they uh, get a bad taste in their mouth with organized religion or people that call themselves Christians. And, you know, it's very easy to see why these people get a bad taste in their mouth around people like this. And, um, you know, it, it all comes back down to hypocrisy. And what is hypocrisy? How can we understand hypocrisy as it relates to religion? And, you know, deep down our sinful flesh, if you really believe we're all made uh, in, and uh, born into sin, as I believe we are, then we're all born with a nature, a sin nature inside of us that uh, is naturally hypocritical. It naturally wars against God. It naturally um, does doesn't doesn't do things that it says it's going to do. And so uh, let's dive into this because you know <laughs> the part that's funny to me about this is uh, you know there's like this thought that okay Islam actually does what it says and the state is like you know religious institution kind of Sharia law type stuff and like that's a good thing and it should be encouraged which I think is funny considering the Holy Roman Empire under the Roman Catholic Church is the organization that killed more true Christians than any organization in history right as a a state run religion which is frightening right so you know I think there's some good things about uh harsh rules in the state setting which you know people people say crimes low over in Dubai for example right because of the way the government's run over there but um there's some negatives to that too and uh it can be taken to extremes very easily once you go down that road so you know I think uh, it's kind of short-sighted to just uh look at it as if it's all good um not saying that those guys do but from what I've heard them talk about they promote it as as being the superior thing. So let's just talk about, you know, tolerance and Christianity. We've seen a lot of uh, people that call themselves Christians doing and behaving in ways that the Bible clearly, clearly condemns, clearly teaches against. I mean, this is just plain, like if you if you've ever read the Bible, you know, sexual immorality, homosexuality, uh, this transgender stuff, you know, all of this type of immoral behavior is not encouraged by scripture, right? In fact, it's condemned. It says, repent of these things, turn around and go away from them to truth. And uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff from the Bible, if you actually have ever read it, which I would highly encourage you to do, because that's the only way you're going to know is if you seek. Seek and ye shall find, knock, and it will be opened unto you. So, you know, with that in perspective, you hear you hear the uh, Andrew Tates of the world talking about the craziness. You know, you hear from people who say they're Christians now doing all these things that go against what the Bible actually teaches. Hey, that's like the definition of hypocrisy, right? So, okay, we got some hypocrites. Guess what, everybody? We're all hypocrites at some level. Sorry to break it to you. That's just the truth. We're all we're all born into sin and we're all hypocrites. That's why we all need a savior, Jesus. Hey. So what does this mean? Right? Well, what does James say in the book of James? Faith without works is dead. Well, it just means these Christians don't really have faith. That's what it means. Sorry. That's just the truth. They have faith in some other Jesus that's not the real Jesus because they don't even know what Jesus teaches and does, right? There's a lot of people at the end of time that are going to say, Lord, Lord, and he'll say, I don't even know you. That's scary. How do you know him? Through his word. Have you read it? Have you read the word? How often do you read the word? Have you ever read the word? Listened to it? Studied it? Different translations? 
listen to books or read books that talk about what it actually means. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've even heard people have criticisms of, well, you know, you can get everything you need to know from the Bible, so why would I read other books? It's like, well, there was a ton of really, really smart Christian people that know a lot of history that actually know Greek and Hebrew, the original languages, because lots of lost in translation, that uh, give some really good insight into what uh, Scripture means. Now it's connected to other parts of Scripture, which it's hard to make all those connections if you're not a language and linguistics expert, historical expert, and you know, you haven't studied the entire Bible through and through multiple times. So you can glean a lot of really good insight from our, what we call a church fathers, you know, the early Christians, and we should always get wisdom from our elders. Isn't that just obvious, basically wise information? Seek out mentors. Ever heard that? <laughs> That's what you're doing. These are our Christian mentors through the ages, but you always compare it to what the Bible actually says. And if you don't know what it says, then you can't compare it. So you got to read it. If you haven't read it, one of my strategies to do that and get through lots of scripture and make sure I hear a lot of the scripture in addition to my other study and prayer and devotions with my family and going to church and attending Bible studies, which I haven't been doing as much lately, but I do a lot of personal study, is audio Bible. I use the Bible app and I listen to at least three chapters a day every morning. And if you do that, you'll get through the entire Bible in just over a year, um, like a year and a quarter. So, you know, there's really no excuse. <laughs> like three chapters a day typically takes about 15 minutes of listening. So you can easily, easily, maybe not even that, maybe 10 minutes of listening. So you can easily get through the Bible. So no excuses, go read it. And, um, you know, faith without works is dead. Let's talk about knowledge versus belief, because uh, there's a lot of people that say they believe in Jesus. But if you don't know Jesus, it's hard to believe in him. And um, if you don't actually act and do the things that Jesus teaches, then you don't really believe. Just think about it. If I say I believe in gravity and then I just go jump off a building thinking I'm going to be fine, well, that's pretty stupid. I obviously don't believe I'm going to fall to my death, right? Or if I do believe that, I'm going to wear a parachute or I'm going to do some other, you know, a bungee cord or I'm going to do something that would prevent me from falling to my death unless I just want to kill myself, which again would be ridiculous. So this is this is a fundamental, like you're, you're, if you have true belief and faith, then you are actions will follow what you believe. It's just how it works. I believe that if I drive my car off a bridge, it's not going to be good. So I don't do that, right? This is pretty straightforward stuff. And I think there's a lot of people, you know, you hear the Andrew Tate say, oh, there's Christians, there's hypocrites, right? They say they're Christians, but they're not. Well, yeah, there's, you know, there's people saying they're women, but they're not, right? People are sinful and they are hypocrites. So, you know, when I hear the Andrew Tate say things like, oh, you know, Christianity's weak, it's like, maybe you haven't fully studied it, Andrew. Maybe you haven't met some real Christians. You know, maybe uh, it's it's just so funny to hear that comment you know, coming from somebody who's so strong about many, many topics and uh, well-read about many, many topics and is now promoting Islam as the solution to that. This uh, um, I haven't studied Islam in depth, so I'm really not going to speak on Islam. But um, referring to Christians as weak is, is just an interesting comment, uh, given the state of the world, given the fact that the entire world wars against Christians, given the fact that uh, we're the most heavily persecuted group on the face of the earth, have been forever. And um, we stand in strength, in faith, love, truth, and courage. And uh, many Christians, thousands and billions and millions probably of Christians, have uh, kept the faith and stood for truth to their death. They didn't go around murdering people, true Christians, right? They didn't just go around like killing all the people that, you know, were mad at them. They uh, they said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Lord, hold not to sin against them as they're being stoned, right? So you know, I really wish Andrew Tate, if you're listening out there, that you'd study the word and uh, get around some real Christians like me and the folks I know. And uh, we're entering a time where we're really going to have to stand and fight for our faith. And, uh, you know, th this weak idea of Christians being weak and submissive, you know, it doesn't mean we just sit and get abused. It just means we stand for truth and we fight for truth and we do it in a way that is according to God's word in faith, love, truth, and courage. And uh, we know we're going to face persecution when we do that. If y'all are hearing talk about this, I'd encourage you to share this episode with people. Maybe you've talked to about this. Maybe you're hearing from those types of people about this. Let's let's get some truth out into the world. 
Because this is one of the biggest callings I feel in my heart with GLE is I see all this personal development content and I see some really, really good true information, like really good stuff. And then there's just this little spin that goes against actual truth. And one of my best examples is believe in yourself. You got to believe in yourself. Well, that sounds good, right? Believe in yourself. But from a Christian perspective, what it actually means is you need to believe in the identity that God has given you. You need to believe in God. And if you do that, you will believe in yourself because you will believe that God has made you fearfully, wonderfully, for a purpose, foreordained your good works that you might walk in them. You are a son of the king, adopted son through your baptism, and you can go forth boldly into this world with that identity, knowing that we have eternity ahead and this temporal life is fleeting and we're called to be good stewards of the time and money and resources and, and children and all the gifts we've been given on this earth in time. That is believing in yourself. It's actually believing in God. But they, they turn you into God. That's what Satan always wants to do. Satan wants to put himself in the place of God, and he wants you to do the same thing. He wants you to be the God, you to be the one who can decide your sex and your, uh, yeah, funny line from Pastor Murray at my church here in Houston. Uh, people don't have gender. Words have gender. People have sex. So think about that. Everyone's talking about gender. Gender has to do with language. It's not, a, you know, there's two sexes, man and woman. That's how it is. So get this in your head that the world is always going to lie to you and you need to be on guard and you need to study to show yourself approved. Study it, read it, share it with people, speak it into your family, the truths of God, the promises of God, speak them into the world around you and share the show with someone who needs to hear it. And as you go, lead everything.